So you like simple, what we call guide flies, minimal materials? If you do, stick around. You're gonna love this next fly. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my tying bench. If you've been here before, it's great to see you again. If this is your first time visiting, I hope you enjoy this video and please give it a like. If you enjoy the video content on my channel, please subscribe. It's easy, just hit that subscribe button below. If you want to get notified about future videos so you don't miss out, just hit that notification bell and you'll get email notice every time I upload a new video just like this one. Today we're tying a simple guide fly, if you will, the feather leech, jig hook. Slotted bead, slap and feather, and a little bit of flash. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And the best thing of all, trout love this fly in lots of different colors. The recipe list is simple. It's coming up. If you do miss it, you can obviously pause it, but you can also check out the comments section below where the recipe will be listed along with links to all the materials I use today and the tools and equipment. So let's get at it so you don't miss out. Let me show you how I tie the feather leech. So let me introduce you to the feather leech. In the jaws of my vise, I've got a Daiichi 4647 60 degree heavy wire jig hook. This is the black nickel finish. You could certainly use the 4640 bronze finish. They're equally good. I've slid on, in this instance, a 1 8 uh, slotted tungsten copper bead, you could use a black one, you could use gold, whatever uh, bead color you like and that obviously complements um, the overall look of the fly. It's important to know with any slotted bead, you always want to slide the slotted bead with the narrow end towards the hook eye. So you can use the slotted part of the bead at the back to help navigate around and I've just twisted this around and make sure that the bead is pushed up tight against the hook eye. So now we're going to attach our tying thread. It's going to use some olive here. You could use brown, black. The thread color really doesn't come into it, but I'm really putting a few wraps right at the back of the bead to sort of help make sure that's locked in place because I've got that bead pushed tight against that um, hook eye and I really want to make sure it doesn't jump around and uh, back off the hook eye. Sometimes that can happen. It really doesn't affect the fishability of the fly that much, but it just doesn't look right. So we're just going to cover the hook shank with tying thread to roughly the point. Bring our tying thread back up. Let it hang just back from the hook eye. Then we're going to put a little flash tail. So we're going to use some uh, copper crystal flash. We're doing a uh, brownish colored one in this example. I'll show you some other color options a little later. So I've put that notch in the bag so I can uh, reach in and use my scissors points to pull out what I need. A couple is fine because they're quite long. I can fold them over and, and make them longer. So I've got three out here and I'm just going to lay those strands. I've got a fair amount sticking out in front but the majority of the length of the crystal flash after I tie it in is trailing behind. Get a few wraps, start working that down, and then I'm going to take the remainder that's forward to the initial tie-in point, double it back over, lash it down, and secure this all the way down to where I finish the thread base. Then I'm going to quickly come back up to the initial tie-in point. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to stagger cut meaning I'm going to cut this crystal flash to different lengths so on the finished fly this will flicker sort of throughout and we can do some other adjustments later but just a, a rough stagger cut. I don't want to cut them even like the end of a paintbrush. Now for the body we're just going to use some copper flashaboo in this case and again these color combinations are to complement the overall color of the feather we're going to use to form the fly. So this is 6906 and because I've chosen to do a, a a brown theme to this, uh, or a rust theme, um, that's copper seems to complement that both in bead and underbody. Again, the, the, when you see how this fly comes together, the, there's a, a few copper, a few permutations you can use. So I've uh, 
taken a number of strands out, half a dozen or so. That's not really critical, just get a clump you're happy with. Less is always more, of course. Don't overdo it. And I'm just going to tie this in place directly behind the bead. And then I'm just going to start winding this copper flash of boo back. And I just moisten my fingers to help keep it together all the way down and all the way back up. And this is just to give the fly a little inner flash uh, because this is pretty well enveloped to the point you almost can't see it uh, by the feather that we're going to use to form the, the wing or the hackle or the body of the fly. And now I'm just going to take this remainder and I'm just going to wind back I'm securing this on top of the shank. I'm holding it at an angle to keep it there. I'm going to go about a bead length back and then I'm just going to trim that off. So now I have this blend of flashaboo and crystal flash that's going to flicker and, and catch light and generally attract the fish. Now for the primary ingredient in this fly, the feather. And what we're using today on this particular version is rust black barred schlappen from Montana Fly Company. Great stuff. I love this material um, because it's just perfect for still water flies because of the soft, fluffy nature of the feather itself. It just screams still water flies. Other colors, there's brown black. Purple is always a good color because of its uh, visibility in deep, dark water. Purple is one of the last colors in the spectrum to, to uh, before it disappears. So we got purple black and olive black is a good color and you could certainly use all black schlappen. You could use all white schlappen to make a minnow with a silver bead. Again the combinations are endless. So I've got the one feather I've chosen to use and what you're trying to do is find a feather that the stem is not too thick. We can't really wind this on. It's too, it's too thick but you can see here it's narrow and then the feather starts to taper up and this is the section of the feather I want to work with. Not this narrow stuff at the base but just where it starts to be a consistent width and then starts to fall into the, the main part of the saddle itself. So what I'm going to do is strip away sort of that shorter uh, length stuff at the base and then just to help make this rotate and be easier to work with I'm going to use my thumbnail to basically break the grain of the feather and this is going to make it a lot easier to wind with. So I'm going to take the now prepared feather. I've just exposed a bit of the stem as a tying point. I'm going to tie that in place. Um, you'll note if you can I suppose you want to tie it on the most prominently marked side or the um, shiny side of the feather uh, so it, the fibers naturally flow back. This is so soft it really isn't that consequential. And then you notice I've got a bit of that stem exposed still. I'm not tying right at the base of the feather where, the, where the, the soft plumage starts. This gives me a bit of an opportunity to sort of aim the feather if you like and get it started which I've done here. And I'm just going to start winding one wrap directly in front of the previous wrap all the way up. And what I want, I want this soft marabou like feather. Um, that's what I'm, that's my target feather. I don't really want to get into the upper part of the feather that's more traditional hackle like. It's certainly soft enough but this marabou like base is unbelievably good and I'm just using my thumb and forefinger and I'm winding this right away. Now you can see I've gone into the main part of the feather a bit and that's okay too. And then I'm just going to come up, sort of weave my thread through behind the bead a couple of turns and then I'm going to grab everything, including this, um, the remainder of the feather, and pull everything back. Place additional thread wraps right there. And sometimes you can snap hard, but uh, today I'm going to take the air on the side of caution. And just trim that tip out. Place a few more wraps in there. A little bit of a errant strand there. We'll trim that off. So now we just got to... Finish everything off so you could use some super glue. I'm just going to use some solar res here, bone dry. <laughs> Equally good or arguably better resin uh, to adhere everything. Get a couple of wraps in there. Pull down, 
whip finish. Trim away our excess. And then come in with our light and just cure the resin. That's done. And that is the finished feather leech. Give it a quick pinch like this, we'll train everything. When this gets wet, this fly just oozes movement everywhere. Really works well. Let me show you a tip or two on how I like to fish it. My feather leech is both easy to tie and fishes well. I use two primary presentation techniques with this fly, hanging under an indicator or using cast and retrieve techniques with a midge tip, hover, or clear intermediate line. When I'm using indicator tactics, quite often I just use a non-slip loop knot and hang it beneath the indicator. While it doesn't hang balanced, it moves and jigs enough under the indicator to draw more than a few trout's interest. If you want to make it hang more horizontal, try using a clinch knot and cinch that knot tight against the hook eye to induce the fly to sit more horizontal. When I'm using cast and retrieve techniques, again with the midge tip, hover, or clear intermediate line, I'm using a series of four to five inch poles with prolonged pauses to make that fly jig and dart throughout the water. Be careful with this fly, as takes are seldom subtle.